So the Elgamal signature um, that we already finished last time, I'm just going to repeat that. Um, the, the way it works is that um, you send two numbers. The first one gives you somehow the secret number that you have selected, and the second one then basically encrypts or the signs with that number. So what happens is that you select a random integer k, that integer is, is a nonce just used for that message. So you select a k, which is not only random but also um, relatively prime to q minus 1, and that is just for that message. So the other side doesn't know k. For the other side to find out what the, to, to use that value, you really send them S1, which is A raised to K mod Q. So that is the first thing you send, A raised to K mod Q. And then you use K to compute this thing, K inverse, and you send both of them. And at the other end, then if they calculate V1 and V2, where V1 is A raised to M mod Q and V2 is this, then if they do together, then they, if they are equal, then they, you know that they are, then the signature is valid. And the reason this happens is because S1 has a particular value, A raised to K mod Q. Even though you don't know K, but you can raise it to, M, to the power S2 and you can raise Y to the power S1. So by doing that, you know, the mathematics works out that um, they are equal to A raised to M. <coughs> anyway, so the main problem with this method is, and we went to the example, which I will not go again, but basically the main problem with this method is that you have to do a lot of calculation right when you are sending the message. So Snor, he fixed so that most of the work can be done beforehand, and when you are sending the message, less work is required in doing that. So that's the main difference. Everything else is, is still the same uh, as before. It also uses exponentiation and, and something very similar to previous one. So what you do is you choose A, which is, a, which, which is such that A raised to Q is 1 mod P. Okay. So you have two primes, P and Q, and then A raised to Q, 1 mod P. If it was A raised to P minus 1, then we will say A is a root. But A is not a root here. A is some number such that A raised to Q is 1, not A raised to P minus 1. So you have to be careful about that one. And then A, P, Q are global parameters. Global parameter means everybody uses their, those numbers. So those are not, those are kind of posted somewhere. You can find it in some RFC. So those numbers are global. Everybody knows those numbers. Now, each user, when they want to sign a message using these parameters, they select a secret key S and calculates a public key based upon that S. A raised to minus S mod Q. Right? And you sign the message with a random number R which is very similar to Al-Gamal, we are doing in Al-Gamal also we had similar things that people had their keys and then they had a message key, in this case R is the message key, and A raised to R mod P which is very similar to S1. Then you can coordinate S1 or actually X with M and you hash it and um, then you do R plus S E mod Q, where S is your um, secret key, private key. R is the number you have selected, S is your private key, E is the hash. And that signature pair is E comma Y. So it is very similar to S1, S2 thing, stuff over there. The math is slightly different, but the, the key is that when you are sending the message, then you are not doing k inverse. In the previous case, when you are sending the message, you have to do k inverse and you have to do this much. So much of this is already calculated. So this is just an extension of Algamal in some sense. 
Um, let's see. Yeah, and then you want to verify at that prime. At that point, you calculate. Uh, you calculate them um, x prime, and then you calculate. Verify that the m concatenated with x prime has us to the same value e, which is the first number. The x prime comes from y. So. Anyway, so I mean, all this can be mathematically worked work out. So this is basically SNOR is just an extension of Elgamal where some of the calculations are done beforehand. Okay, that's the summary. Now DSS is further extension of Elgamal. DSS is a standard, digital signature standard, again, by NIST, and then um, updated, so they first started with 90s and then 91, they updated it, and then 93, 96, and 2000, they updated it. And it uses Shah-Hash algorithm. And um, and then in 2000, they started uh, allowing RSA and elliptic curve signature variants. So, so this is only for digital signatures, and um, it is very similar to what we saw before. Which and so RFA approach was the one that we had talked about before, um, somewhere in the beginning, like this. I think this is RFA approach. We have to take the message and you double encrypt it once with the public key of the recipient and once with the private key of yourself. So that is what is shown again here. So you <coughs> you you encrypt it with your private key, concatenate it, and send it to the other side. The other side can just use the public key of yours and encrypt and, and, and verify that this is the message has not been changed. That is the RSA approach. DSS approach is that you take the hash, take a per message secret key, do the signature, just like in Algamal, you have a per message key and you have your private key. And um, and public global key. And in addition, just like a snore they have a public global key. So this is everybody in the world uses that. And then you concatenate it and then send two numbers S and R at the other end. You can put that into the algorithm and compare it. Okay. So that is basically extension of that one. So let's show the details of S and R. Um, the details are here. Before we go to the details, the signature is 320 bits, which is twice the hash because there are S and R. 512, and that gives you about 512 to 1024 bit security. It is smaller and faster than RSA. RSA would require lot many more bits. And um, it is only for signature, um, and, and, and actually we already said it's, it, it's, a, it's a variant of Elgamal and it's not. So let's look at the algorithm. Algorithm is that you select a number P, Q, P and Q and a, if you remember from this NARF algorithm, we had an A. So here we have P and Q. And so Q is a 160-bit prime number. And P is a larger number, about 512 to 1024 bit number. So therefore, it is between 2 raised to 512 minus 1 are in that range are 2 raised to 1024 bits. So P is a large number. And Q is a prime divisor of p minus 1. And then you choose z, which is h raised to p minus 1. So this is similar to the previous algorithm where we had, in this NOS, we had a raised to r, a raised to q equal to 1 mod p. Similar to that, they have here a number g, which is again global. So this is uh, global, and this satisfies this property, h raised to p minus 1 upon q where h is another number between 0 and p minus 1. So anyway, all this is done beforehand. So this is the calculation that you don't have to do. Actually, this you can probably find in the NIST, NIST document itself. They have done p, q, and h, and g, all calculated for you. And you can find in some RFCs these numbers. These are global. What you do when you want to send the message is you select a message key x and you compute the public key for the message g raised to x mod p and to sign the message you select 
sorry, this is similar to snarl. Then you assign a message with k, and um, and you do do j dash g dash to k mod q get r, and then k inverse with mod q get an s, and that gives you signature r comma s. So so in that sense, this is similar, more similar to Elgamal than snarl. Elgamal um, in Elgamal we did k inverse times h m plus x r and so this is exactly that if you go back to Elgamal k inverse m minus x1 s1 this is similar to that m minus x1 s1 here we do hash of m plus x r Okay, so you send those two things, and when you want to verify, the mathematics works out that you do you calculate um, v and r, and if v is equal to r, then the math and then the signature is verified. Anyway, summary of this idea is this: there is a lot of mathematics there, but the idea is that we do some exponentiation, which you can verify if you can exponentiate some other numbers. You don't have to take any logs. Period. Logs are difficult. But exponentiation is easy, so we send two numbers, and uh, somehow with some exponentiation math, the numbers come out okay, and so you can verify. Second concept is that there are some global variables because p and q are large prime numbers. Not everybody can find them, and so they are just globally used. They are put into RFC. In fact, I, I don't have the RFC number here, but one of the RFCs I checked last time had this big um, hex number, which is what everybody uses in these things, in signatures. So you can find these numbers in the RFCs, and you just program that in your, um, in your program. There are three signature schemes, but they're all very similar. Elgamal, SNOR, and DSA. In all three, there are some large variables which are global, and then you select a key for yourself and they select a key for the message. The key for yourself is here, x and gx, and the key for the message is k and r. So k is secret, r is public. Here x is secret, y is public. And um, so it's, you know, in that sense it is similar to RSA that you, you just take the exponentiation. And uh, the signature somehow is such that if you were to verify, to verify all you need is some kind of exponentiation, which in this case is V equal to G raised to U1, G is a global variable, and U1 is calculated like this and U1 and U2, times Y raised to U2, will be equal to r. Okay, so here I think, I mean, basically the formula I can't remember and you cannot remember, so obviously that part is not clear as to what the formulas are. But you can sit down and work it out that this is true. Basically you have to know that this is true, that if v equal to r, then signature is verified. And that you can do by, you know, putting all these things in the formula. And obviously the hash is the key because the if if any bit in the message is changed by somebody then the hash will not match and so that hash value comes into the other equations and um, in this case you send two values uh, you send two values and signature is r and s each of them is 160 bit long and therefore you have a uh, 340 bit signature Okay, having said that, um, as I said, you can sign the documents using Acrobat, using one of these methods. I don't know whether Acrobat implement DSS, but I would think so they will, if they are going to do anything else. But in Acrobat, there is an option to sign. So the summary, the three key points of this short lecture is that digital signature depends upon the message and some additional information you need to the signer to prevent forgery and denial, and everybody, anybody should be able to verify. And in addition, what we have done in these cases is, which we did not do before in Mac, was we have a per message secret. 
So for each message, we use a secret, and that, um, um, and therefore we have to send two numbers, and one which basically allows the other side to know the secret. Or if they don't need to complete the secret, they can just use that those two numbers to verify, and it uses it generates the 320 bit signature. Now, homework. DFA specifies that its signature generation process results in a value of S equal to zero. A new value of K should be generated and the signature should be recalculated. So let's do that here. S is equal to K inverse HM plus XR mod Q. I did not go into the detail here, but if you read the book, it will say if S equal to zero, then the k is no good, you start back again here, get another k until s is non-zero. The question is, um, why? And that should be easy to figure out because if s is zero, then without doing any exponentiation, you can find out some numbers and any, any logarithm, you know, because then you know, something equal to zero will tell you that. All right, so go back to that equation. And if S is zero, then you can easily calculate some things. All right, so that is first part. Second question is, suppose Alice signs a message M with using DSA with a specific K value, and then the K value was compromised. So K is a per message key. That's the random number, right? And suppose somebody finds out what the K value was although it is not given any in any signature, but suppose somebody finds out. Can you use that same K again for any anything else? Obviously not, because if somebody knows the secret, something will not work out and they can generate your signatures. With that, in the right? So I mean like, can, can you still use her private key for future digital signature? So that the private key of the signer can be easily computed in both of the above two cases. So that's the hint that if you somebody finds out K, they can calculate X.